Finally, let's end with a summary of all of the important factors that affect this choice of SN1, SN2, E1, or E2 when a nucleophile and electrophile are mixed. This table summarizes all of the important factors and will allow you to predict the mechanism that operates when a particular electrophile and nucleophile are mixed under a particular set of reaction conditions. Let's go through the table column by column to see how the nucleophile affects the outcome and row by row to see how the substitution pattern of the electrophile affects the outcome as well. The first column lists anionic nucleophiles that are weak bases. These are anions whose conjugate acids are relatively strong, from traditional strong acid territory up to a pKa of about 10. When these nucleophiles are combined with primary substrates, SN2 substitution is the rule, owing largely to the intrinsic preference of primary electrophiles to engage in substitution. But the rate of substitution can be reduced by steric hindrance at the beta carbons, not the electrophilic carbon, but the ones directly attached to it, as in the case of the neopental group, which looks like this. In the secondary case, we have this interesting competition between SN2 substitution and E2 elimination. The outcome largely depends on the basicity of the nucleophile, with more basic nucleophiles, those on the higher end of this pKa range when it comes to their conjugate acids, will tend to favor elimination. And acetate, pKa of about 5 is a good cutoff point for this. Once again, branching at the beta carbons, such as the neopental group, are going to slow substitution, and this will increase elimination. When it comes to tertiary electrophiles, E2 elimination is generally the rule. The electrophilic carbon is just too sterically hindered. However, because a tertiary electrophile can support the formation of a relatively stable carbocation, we may observe E1 elimination or SN1 substitution when a strongly ionizing or high dielectric polar protic solvent is used. In fact, that's the case for all tertiary electrophiles. What factor controls the balance of SN1 and E1 products under these conditions in red, the high dielectric ionizing solvent conditions? Well, it's something we've talked about. Temperature. Heating the reaction mixture will encourage E1 elimination over SN1 due to the entropic effects that we've discussed previously. Anionic nucleophiles that are also strong bases, whose conjugate acids have relatively high pKa's, greater than 15, are things like hydroxide, alkoxides, amides, carbanions, etc. And these, with primary electrophiles, will tend to engage in SN2 substitution, once again reflecting the intrinsic preference of primary substrates to engage in SN2 substitution. However, because of the basicity of this class of nucleophiles, mm -hmm. when the electrophile is secondary, E2 elimination starts to dominate, especially at high temperatures. In the tertiary case, there's no question that E2 elimination is going to dominate, as no SN2 substitution will occur. Finally, for neutral nucleophiles, these tend to be molecules that aren't basic enough to remove a beta hydrogen without loss of the leaving group first. Although it will be slow, neutral nucleophiles engage with primary substrates to give products of SN2 concerted substitution. And nitrogen is especially adept at this. A similar situation happens for secondary electrophiles, which also engage in SN2 substitution with these neutral nucleophiles, nitrogen being a famous example. However, here again, because secondary carbocations can form under these reaction conditions in polar protic solvents, SN1 and or E1 products may form slowly with heat encouraging the formation of E1. So the secondary case is a bit of a catch-22 when it comes to polar protic solvents. We only get SN1 products very slowly, and heating the reaction mixture to try to accelerate SN1 leads to a preference for E1. Finally, neutral nucleophiles and tertiary electrophiles combine to engage in E2 elimination when nitrogen nucleophiles are used. However, most of the nucleophiles listed up here are too weak bases to actually engage in E2 elimination. And so most often we use a polar protic solvent under these conditions to promote either SN1 or E1 with heat, once again, encouraging E2 elimination. Before ending this video, the last thing I want to say is that the exact outcome listed in each box isn't really what's important. It's the underlying factors, the things we've discussed in the previous videos leading up to this point, that are the most important things to understand. If you have an intuitive feel for the underlying factors dictating these outcomes, you don't need to memorize this table. 
you only need to apply those factors to interpreting a particular reaction, and you'll come to the most reasonable answer every time, especially after a good deal of practice. Don't be afraid to make mistakes here when you're considering these factors in the early stages. As you practice more, make more mistakes, and diagnose your errors, the mistakes will become fewer and fewer, and you'll gain a more intuitive feel for how the molecules behave, and this is one of the key core goals of this course.